Okay, so let's try another one of these. Uh, uh, I am recording. Okay, so let's play. Uh, single player, 10 minutes, moving, panning, and zooming, start game. Okay. So this is... Hmm. Looks like it could be, like, Singapore. Some place like that. Yep, has... Has palms. Recyclables only. Uh, those signs are in English. Wang Tua. Yeah, I think this is Singapore. Let's go down here. Hope! <laughs> Let's see, night parking. Hong Mo Kyo. 119 to 128. Superlogistics.sg, okay, so, um, well, we're only a few kilometers off. <laughs> In the other we hmm. Ang Mo Kyo Avenue three. Now, is Ang Mio Kyo a section of Singapore? There's a lot of those marked here. Ang Mio Kyo. Hmm. Ang Mio Kyo Avenue 3, plotted here. Okay. Now, let's see. So... Hung Guan Huat Ki. Um, so let's see, Avenue 3, it goes around a corner like this. Ah. So we return to start. There's 125. 126. 127. The buildings are marked here, so... Let's see, going along Avenue 3. Wait, there's the ones. 111. 101. 121. Yeah, we're looking for 126 and 127. There's 126 and 127. Let's see, which end is this? Oh, there's the there's the road between that. It has to be this end. Right. Um Alright. Perfect. And uh also, that makes the video shorter, since it didn't take the whole 10 minutes. Okay. Is that censorship? Um, no, free. Yeah, English signs. Uh, looks British. Yeah. Cars on the left. Um, that's an English sign. Yeah, White Hill. Farnham. A325, A3. A3 is probably a major road. Um, 
you know, the biggest highways in Britain, of course, are the M's usually, right? Um, oh, A's are, yeah, I think A's are another set going out of, the small numbers go out of London. There's A2, there's A3. Okay. A325 and A3. Right. So it goes out of central London, which I think we're not in. Uh, wait, Farnham, I think, is... Yeah, that's out... Yeah, yeah, that's here. Um, so, A325... Let's see, Farnham and Petersfield. <laughs> oh yeah, there's the Guildford and Godaming Bypass, one of the best-named towns in Britain. I think it's Godalming, or, uh, except... You know, like, uh, Gadalming? Except, you know, I think in, like, Alms, British people don't pronounce the M, so it's Gadalming, or... Um, Petersfield and Farnham. Wondering if the railway stations are useful. That that station is Farnham. Is there going along the line here? Now next one is Aldershot, uh, Ashvale. Nah. Bentley. Let's see, A325 and A3. Let's see, A3 is here. So we have the right general area. We still have six minutes left because we found this very quickly. Um, so we have some time to. out where this is. <laughs> Fried chicken ranch. Okay, there's multiple references to Borden, so that's where we are. Um, that's on the business signs. <laughs> Polish specialties, that's a thing in Britain that they, uh, during their period when they were members of the EU, it was unusually easy for Polish people to get in. Um, And then, of course, British people complained about Polish immigrants, which made them sound completely ridiculous to uh, people from the U.S. Um, Borden. Borden may be a section of town. Um, 
so it may not be easy to find on the map. Is it part of Farnham? Um, Yeah, we're still on the lookout, of course, for that 325. A 323. Wait, that's too off. That's uh, sometimes useful. They'll number them consecutively. That's A 323. A 325. Okay, so those signs look like we were actually on 325, so we look then for things called Borden on here. It's Farnborough Road, Farnham Barbers, Texaco Farnham. Okay, so it looks like this you end up in older shot. Farnborough. Frimley. Where's Borton? Cambridge. Uh, in fact, I think we ran out of A325 because this merges into A30 London Road. Um, okay, could it be the other direction from... Uh, from Farnham, right? There's the A325 again, Farnham Barbers, A325, Sainsbury's. Here it ends on A31, which may be the route to the A3 that they were thinking of was that you get on, yeah, you get on A31, go this way. So... Yeah, so Borden could be kind of a small neighborhood. Um, these things sometimes, you know, they're named uh, in Britain. Sometimes you find places in, you know, relatively urban areas like this where they named uh, things after the uh, the uh, village with the parish church, you know, uh, in pre-Victorian times, and then everything uh, eventually sprawled together. Um, and there were a whole lot of those churches, uh, you know, they had to, uh, make sure that, uh, everyone could show up for their mandatory services, um, relatively easily, um, otherwise they might become nonconformists. Borton Masonic Center. Ah, 15 kilometers. Okay. Yeah, so I guess the A325 then was longer than I thought. Yeah, it's Forge Road here. Yeah, so I just didn't look very well. Next round. Okay, this is round three. Uh, Bollard's very non-American. Um... Also, yeah, the lines there. People are driving on the right. So, um, it's 
probably Europe then. And that's a sign with some writing on it. Osteria Chiqueteria, 400 meters, Pavan. Yes, Louis. Um, okay, this is Italy. Usually, Italy does not look like this. Uh, this must be like the big flat area around the Po, right? You know, this is the only place where there's there's usually hills visible somewhere. Uh, yes, Louis sounds familiar. I want to say it's on the Adriatic coast. Yes, hello. Okay, so it's on the it's on the Venice Lagoon. Okay, yes, hello. Four six. Oh wait, four is that four point six kilometers, or is that something else? And uh, San Maria de P. Locations here, San Donat de Piave, Noventa de Piave, so that's, is there a San Maria de Piave? Yeah, so there's certainly flat land in this area. Um, Alps are some distance away. Lido di Esola, there's another, the McDonald's sign. Okay. Oh yeah, I've noticed these in Italy, these Q8 stations. This, uh, I had heard of the company, this is a attempt by Kuwait's National Petroleum uh, Company to get into distribution. I've never seen one in real life. I think they only exist in Europe. Um, not quite as bad as in the 1990s, there was um, the Bin Laden Company in Saudi Arabia attempted to open a chain of gas stations, I think in Kyrgyzstan, and they had to change the name after uh, the... Uh, Named Bin Laden made people think of other things. Um, oh, there is Passarella. Yep. Oh, SR forty three and forty two. Wait, SP forty two, SR forty three. There's SR forty three. There's SP forty two. There's the McDonald's referred to on the sign. Um, see, this roundabout has both SP42 and SR43 in it. Uh, Passarella is up there. Or could it be that roundabout?
no sign of being near the sea, which the other one was. Hmm. Oh, okay. Sand do not appear to be leaving the town. Okay, so that's... That was all the way up here. There's SR-43 and SP-42, which don't intersect anywhere near Sandonada de Piave. Maybe a large municipality. Uh, that's probably what's going on. Um, I don't know offhand what size Italian municipalities are. French ones are very small. Um, but countries vary a lot on their policies in that area. Um... The Q8 station would be a great thing to find near one of these roundabouts. <laughs> Via John Lennon! <laughs> well, he should have streets named after him. Oh no, this, this roundabout has some large shopping center next to it. It's not that one. Right. Yeah, this is a round this is a roundabout that's in fields, actually. <laughs> Wonder what those are. They look almost like rice fields, which uh in this part of Italy is actually a possibility. Uh, in fact, you know, that uh, that around some areas around Venice, they actually uh, had wet field rice, and this is why uh, the, the tradi their traditional mozzarella cheese comes from water buffaloes, which, uh, you know, you wonder why anyone in Europe would have those, and that's the reason why, is that they actually did have wet field rice cultivation. Uh, Venezia, San Donato Piave, A4 and A27. Autostrada. Uh, where would there be an autostrada here? That There's not one near the coast, certainly. There's one on the other side of San Donato Piave, uh, but I'm not seeing A4, A27. Yeah, this one has some space around it, but yeah. Wait, there's the there's a bunch of shopping over there. Yeah, I still think it could be that roundabout since that's the only one that has both SR forty three and SS. Wait, is that SS-14? Okay. And it was up there. Hmm. Yeah, so that, that must be the roundabout there. Next round, a fourth of five, uh, red dirt, um, very red dirt. 
Hotel de Paz. Okay, this is not Hotel de Paz. This is in this is in uh, in Portuguese, I think, because um, you know this is clearly not Italy, right? <laughs> um, oh yeah, that's Portuguese. Fazenda São Geraldo, nineteen kilometers down that thing. If you can go 19 kilometers down this thing, um, uh, to get to Fazenda means, you know, like, uh, like farms or, uh, yeah, and this is, uh, uh, depicted on here, there's an Indian cow, which are used in hot climates, um, you know, very common actually in Brazil, which this is, um, yeah, so the, it being 19 kilometers down that road makes me think that this is deep in the heart of nowhere. Um, might actually be west of the Paraná, you know, like Goiás State, Mato Grosso. Um, we go north. Yeah, this could... Big, flat, and empty. But this is classic uh, red laterite dirt. Um, Yeah, this does look like it could be, uh, there's the so-called, uh, Arc of Deforestation, where the, uh, you know, edges of the Amazon that were relatively productive were cut down, um, in the last 60 years or so, um, I think this, you could just, uh, walk for, uh, quite a distance without finding anything. Okay, so I think this is not a semi-arid environment, you know, but it's not particularly wet. Um, and this could, uh, vary depending on, you know, dry versus wet season, but Of course, this could even be a, a forest that has been cut down, and then, you know, this came up later. Um, but, yeah, there's another farm sign, uh, Fazenda Nova Progresso, uh, Chakra Vina Azul. Yeah, very big, flat, and empty. Yeah, this tells us that it's probably not near the coast at all, because there would be, uh, there would be people <laughs> there. Um, where's the sun? Does that tell us anything? Uh, probably not, but... No. Hmm. Yeah, these are vast empty fields. Uh, also, you know, cultivation on this sort of scale, you know, like, uh, this was done with machinery, you know, like, these are not, uh, <laughs> these are, these are not peasant farms. <laughs> um,
do you tell us anything? Uh, Fazenda Kanguzu TO080. Okay, Kaseara TO, that is the location. Um, TO is a northern Brazilian state uh, called Tocantins. Uh, it is kind of in the, the, what I said is the arc of deforestation. It's further north than I thought. Um, see, I mentioned Goyas State. You know, Tocantins is north of it and was separated from it in uh, uh, at the time of the uh, adoption of the modern Brazilian constitution, which I believe was 1992. Um, let's see, Caseara. Tocantins. Uh, Okay. There aren't that many municipalities in this area, you know, this is, uh... So you look at it on the map, you know, a lot of Tocantins, a lot of Tocantins does have forest cover. Yeah, there's Caseara. So, oh, Tio 080, kilometer 208. Uh, Franz Weicher. <laughs> so this is a German Brazilian farmer. Uh, that doesn't mean anything, you know, that there there were plenty of immigrants to Brazil that were not Nazis. Um, let's see, Fazenda Kangusu. All right. Also, you'll notice Tio zero eighty just goes south from uh, Caseara. Um, Kongusu. Now, these farms are not marked on, nothing is marked on these maps. Uh, then again, Facenda Bacaba. Hathor Aguapequeria. Hathor, like the Egyptian goddess. Uh, I guess that's, yeah, there's Marianopolis de Tocantins, which means that we've probably gotten into another municipality, although small villages in Brazil sometimes do not have their own governments, you know, they are sometimes governed by a, a nearby small town. Um, Divinopolis de Tocantins, yeah, that looks larger, that looks like, it's likely, uh, yeah. It was a big straightaway. I'm going to pick this one. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get better than this, so might as well guess now. And two and a half kilometers. So pretty good for such a remote location. Yes. And we play the last round. Okay. Uh, in the road cut, that's white crumbly rock. Uh, looks, you know, like sedimentary stuff. You know, you can see the drill holes that, you know, that they uh, separated off slabs from the wall that way. Okay, guardrail. So this looks semi-arid. There's a city in the distance. Um, unclear whether that beyond it is the sea or... Looks like it may be the sea. White buildings. Uh, Mediterranean appearance, you know, uh, scrubland. Wait, there's a sign up there. Israel. <laughs> okay. And this is a language that I know very little about. Um, you may find bilingual signage, or <laughs> in this case, very lingual signage. All right. <laughs>
yeah, that's strange. You know, open valuti. It's a currency exchange sign. Uh, oh, looks like you can get into town quite quick here. Um, presence of Arabic on signs, you know, uh, indicates that they're, uh, is an Arab population in the area, which of course is quite common in, in uh, Israel, you know, they, for the most part, they didn't remove them all. Um, yeah, that yeah, that looks like it's the sea. Um, Danger of death. Well, that's... Hmm. Meuhadatsio.co.il, okay. Um, nothing on these signs has told me anything about the location, uh, and given the languages involved, uh, Yeah, high level of bilingualism in Arabic in this area. Um, uh, Somebody is doing a lot of cleaning. Okay, we got five minutes left. Um, yeah, I think this is an Arab neighborhood. Okay, so I haven't even guessed yet. Um, now let's see, if it is near the sea, um, it wasn't that far and we were, you know, several hundred meters up from that city, it looked like. It was not, you know, really bricked in with towns. It's not, it's the, that, that was not a view of Tel Aviv. Um, was, looked like it was a relatively uh, less populated area of coastline. Thinking maybe closer to Haifa, there's, I know that there's Arab communities in this area, uh, you know, there's Mount Carmel, um, so, um, and, you know, if this is the right part of Israel, I'm within like 10 or 15 kilometers already just getting that part, um, What 
what are you up here? Okay, that's just a monumental stone building, uh, modern architecture. Um, danger of death. <laughs> yeah, they really don't want people climbing those things. So much so that they even tell you in English. Um, yeah, now we moved down the road. There's no longer Arabic on the signs, so. Um, <laughs> Israeli flag. Uh, there's Arabic on signs. Um, hmm. Yeah, I my knowledge of Arabic is non-zero, but you know, like I haven't noticed anything that looks useful. Uh, the Hebrew, I. You know, sometimes rec recognize some of the letters, but okay, this is back where we were. There was that sign with the chicken before. Um, those are date poems, I think. Yeah, there's there's the there's the dates right there, actually. <laughs> Hamdan Farm. Um, see, that's what a non-lingual stop sign looks like. Most countries, it does actually say something on the stop sign, but here it doesn't. Arab Israel Bank. Um, also, the presence of the date poems, you know, makes me think that the... Ah, ah so I was actually near Haifa, but, you know, as farther north, it was actually toward the border with Lebanon. There's, uh, looks like maybe I walked into this town, Abu Snan, uh, a very Arab name there. So, view summary, uh, 24,820 points, and we'll do a...